Well, brother, sister, look at me. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Two Guys on Beer. I'm Johnny Bellata. This is Dave Monterana. We're coming to you from National Mechanics in Old City, Philadelphia. And I am, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm ecstatic about this, this particular episode because we're doing one of my favorite style of beers uh, from the Cantillon Brewery out of Brussels, Belgium. We're doing uh, the Cantillon Classic Coos. Uh, which is a uh, style of lambic. Uh, it's a blended style of lambic. Uh, yeah, this is uh, at five percent alcohol by volume. This is the same exact beer that you'll see in some parts of the country and around the world as the Cantillon Goose one hundred percent lambic bio, which means basically it's organic goose. Um, now the Cantillon Brewery in Brussels, Belgium, is about founded around nineteen hundred and. Recently, in the, in the recent past, Johnny and I have talked about a couple of beers that come from family-owned breweries, which Cantheon is, um, who are doing a lot to really modernize their breweries and modernize their processes. And the Cantheon Brewery is one of those ones that really takes time to, to stick to, to tradition. And part of that is a lot of the, their brewing vessels are still 100 years old, and that lends a little bit of a quality to what you get. Considering that we're doing, and John is going to explain what a goose is, but considering that they're blends and they're aged, um, you know, having having some casks and some brewing vessels that are over 100 years only lends to the flavor and the and the and the profile of this. Oh, absolutely. Now, a goose is a is a mixture, is a blend of lambics, uh, usually a lambic that's been brewed and fermented for one year and then aged for another year. So it's a blend of a two to three year. Lambic put together and then aged for another year cellar. Now lambics like champagne are particular to the area that they are done which is the southwestern region of, of Belgium and unlike other beers they're not fermented uh, using yeast they're fermented by what's called um, it's called a spontaneous fermentation which means that they're exposed to the open air the wort is exposed to the open air and yeast that is just in the air in the atmosphere ferments the the wort making it a a, a a beer which making it a lambic right so, now keep in mind spontaneous spontaneous fermentation is actually the way that all alcohol was produced for thousands of years because up until like pasteur you know people didn't really understand how to isolate yeast and before that they didn't even know yeast existed all you know there are stories about how the gods would turn you know liquid into alcohol because they didn't understand exactly what the fermentation process was um, so this is kind of like just holding on to an old, old style of allowing a liquid to sit out and suddenly it becomes alcohol. It's very interesting. It is very interesting. The Lambic is one of my favorite beers and you will see uh, Lambics like Lindemans and things like that. And the, most of these Lambics are, are sweetened with fruit. The reason why they're sweetened with fruit is because Lambics traditionally are extremely sour. They have very a sour. very sour profile, which is the reason why I like them. And they're very unique to beer. So this, the scent off of this that I got right away is that typical Lambic scent, right. very characteristic of a Lambic, but uh, this particular one, I mean, it, it just smells really, really it, good. It really does, and this is kind of where like sour beers get their name. And, and you need to be, you need to understand that sour does not mean skunked because it, it's easy yeah. to confuse. But if you really start to appreciate a lambic, you'll understand the massive chasm between the two. And this is just I can't wait to dive. Into I can let's one. dive into it then. Oh my god. I just got weak in the knees. Whew. This is oh, a, it's perfect. It's 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 very sour at, at the beginning. And it's almost got a little bit of an earthy flavor to it. Very much. And then so. that sour kind of covers off and it finishes and you can feel it go down, despite the fact that it's pretty low in alcohol. You can feel it go down, and then there's this wonderful, extremely dry sort of like fruit rind kind of flavor that like lifts off of your palate afterwards and you know for something that seems so simple the complexity of this is really something else it is it is something else this is a fabulous beer uh mm. from from the mm. Piatenland region of belgium exactly what you want a coos to be uh, a nice light sourness to it tastes spectacular you get a little earthy tones and earthy spices out of it too 
fabulous be fabulous beer to go even with if you got bottle service for dinner if you had like game like deer venison uh, uh, you know chicken frog like frog's legs rabbit like any of those game little meats it would be fabulous yeah so I, I'm of course I'm gonna give it high marks I may mark this at the highest I've ever marked anything I'm giving it a 98 well I'm not going 98 I'm going 94 it's not the highest I've ever marked something but 94 for me is pretty damn good and I think this is pretty damn good uh, yeah so if you if you agree with us on some of these things and if you don't agree I mean you can let us know by hitting up our Twitter feed at twitter.com slash TGOB you can also let us know what you think at our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash two guys on beer and you can also comment on the timeline here or even comment down below way down the page down below after the show notes and let us know what you think about these beers uh, or any others you would like us to try so I'd like to thank National Mechanics one more time for hosting us I'm Johnny Bellata. I'm David Monterana. Go enjoy some beer. Cheers. Mm. Mama, Papa, look at me. Mama, Papa, look at me. Look what your boy grew up to be. Look what your boy.